the halftime. Gary Kaler, the retired esteemed athletic director and coach at Westfield High School. We're at halftime. Summit leading Hackettstown 14-10. We'll take a short break and be back with third quarter action right after this. biggest thing he's been able to run and uh, even when we keep him inside he's found a gap through the middle and uh, has picked up first downs that way obviously you have to be concerned that wind is an awfully big factor and you got to control Pat McFadden the wind's a big factor but it seems like it's a different day now since we came out at halftime it seems like there's less wind but uh, we we are receiving so I'm sure we'll be against the wind in the third quarter so that'll be a big deal maybe you can take advantage of that good luck in the second Thank half you. Phil back upstairs to Matt and Bill all right, Steve, thank you very much. Hilltoppers leading by a score of 14 to 10. The winner takes on the victor in the other semifinal bracket featuring Mendham and Jefferson High School. And that game will be played at the higher seated team's field two weeks from today. Should Summit win, they would host the game. If Hackettstown were to win this game, they would be on the road as they are the number four seed. They cannot host a game in the playoffs. Joe Romanchik doesn't care where he has to go. He'd love to just be able to say we're playing for a championship. Now, people are surprised with the success that Hackettstown had had here this afternoon, but you know, they didn't get here without having a, a good team, you know. They're a fine football team. Six, one, and two on the season. Again, a year in which not much was expected of them because of heavy losses to graduation, but Give them credit, they have put it together, and here they are. John Cummins kicks off, it's a squibber, and good job done by Golden. Rich Golden doing a good job of quickly grabbing the ball, and the Hilltoppers with excellent field position at midfield. He wrapped around that ball real good so that it, they couldn't jar it loose. That's his primary responsibility. Don't turn it loose. We take a look at the drives today for Summit. And you look uh, that, uh, at the fact that they scored their first two times they touched the ball. And they were stymied on that third drive before the end of the first half. Paxson up the middle. Paxson gaining seven yards. John Cummins and Ryan Scheifler making the stop. What I think has happened, and the reason Paxton has been carrying the ball as often as he has, I get a feeling that they've got a, a key on Tory Fogg. I think they've got someone spying on Fogg. And wherever Fogg goes, he's going to be, you know, and he's going to meet him right up on the line of scrimmage. And so they're using him to a great extent as a, a decoy. Allen going left side has the first down to the 36-yard line. This is what they do best, you know, they're methodical. They run off tackle, they run inside, they sweep. Always with a lot of blockers in front of that ball carrier, you know. And at any time, either Allen or Paxton, or in fact Nelson can break through, go the distance, they're dangerous. Here's Paxton, Paxton down to the 30 yard line. The snow squall that we got at halftime has passed. Clouds have blown through. Some clouds in the distance, but a blue sky day. It's warmed up a little bit. Sun behind a cloud temporarily, but uh, when it comes out, it's a very warm day. Wind continues to blow. It is at the back of the hilltoppers, so it will favor Hackettstown in the fourth quarter. Keep that in mind as the scheme develops. Here's Allen stepping out of tackles and might have gone all the way if not for the touchdown saving tackle of Dan Hemberger. I know I said this once and I'm going to have to repeat it. Every time he carries a ball, unless you wrap him up, I mean literally wrap him up, he's going to squirm and he's going to battle and he's going to get that extra yardage. 6'2", 165 pounder, a junior, 40 yards this afternoon and a touchdown scored the opening points of the game fog added a touchdown run for summit before Hackettstown countered with a TD run by McFadden the quarterback and then the field goal by Butts just before halftime I, I have to believe that the reason that Paxton is being as effective one of the reasons he's a good runner I don't think he's not a, a good hard runner 
but he's been averaging about five to seven yards a try, and the reason is there is no middle linebacker. The reason there's no middle linebacker is Tory Fogg isn't uh, is taking that middle linebacker with him. Second down, opening drive of the second half. Here's the ball hiked to Fogg. Fogg going left side, and Tory Fogg is in for the touchdown. An 18-yard run for Tory Fogg, and the Hilltoppers have extended the lead to 20 to 10. I don't care how many keys you have, how many people are reading them, you know? You make a move like that to the inside, you gotta be inhuman not to go for that kind of thing. Watch his fake to the inside before he steps in and breaks to the outside. There he goes inside, and you're the linebacker, and you move inside, and all you gotta do is just take a half a step to the inside. He's outside and history. 72 yards this afternoon for Fogg. The extra point try is good by Welsh. And with 9.08 to go in the third quarter, the Hilltoppers have moved out to an 11 point lead, 21 to 10. And they did that like they did it in the opening series, you know. It, it, they made it look easy. Helped by Rich Golden snaring that bouncing kick by Cummins. Now, if he doesn't grab it, the ball bounces downfield. If he doesn't hold on to it, maybe it bounces forward. And uh, well, the Tigers have the ball, but he did a good job, gave them field position at midfield, and they take advantage of it. Right, they had 50 yards to go. If the ball had gone deep, by, they would have had another 20, 30 yards to move. So you're right, it was a... A very effective move by Golden. Lovell to kick off. Mr. and Mrs. Golden should be very proud. Scheifler picks up the loose ball at the 11. Eludes one tackler. And Scheifler brought down by the kicker, Jeff Lovell, at the 28-yard line. Now in the first quarter, with the wind blowing in their faces, there was a little bit of trouble for Hackettstown with their throwing game. They looked very effective in the second quarter with the wind at their back. We look at their drives scoring on the final two drives, so the opposite as Summit scored on its first two drives of the first half. Hackettstown its final two drives. Summit scoring on the opening possession here of the second half, leading 21-10. McFadden. Brought down, his receivers covered, he tried to step underneath the pressure, was not able to do so, as Bickle and Curiel made the stop. He fooled a lot of people, but he didn't fool Bickle and he didn't fool Curiel. I don't believe he wanted to throw the ball that time. I thought that was a, a predetermined draw by the quarterback. McFadden has been the offensive star for the Tigers all season long. Three receivers out to the right. He rolls out that way, and he fires right into the hands of Torrey Fogg. Fogg looking to come near sideline. A lot of white shirts there. Breaks one tackle, run out of bounds by Kozier. McFadden threw it right into the arms of Fogg. That was the first bad throw that he's made all afternoon. First bad throw, and that was the time when I fully expected him to tuck it and run because he had 10 yards had he kept the ball. You watch now. See, he's got the corner turned. Fogg's third interception of the year. He returns the ball to the 22-yard line. And you know, he's running to the right, and he's, throw, he's a lefty thrower, so that makes for a pro problem. Paxson, pickup of four, second down and six. I thought for a moment on that play, and as you mentioned, Bill, that he could have run. I thought perhaps those three receivers to that side were just to clear it out. Yep, yep. But he elected to throw, and Fogg was there. I'm not sure who the intended receiver was, because I did not see a white jersey in the area. Second down, Summit leading by 11. Well, sooner or later, Hackettstown is gonna to have to stop Summit, and if they don't do it now, why, they're gonna be in trouble anyway. Allen spins down to the 11-yard line. 
it seems like he just gets to the line of scrimmage, you know, and he's going to be stopped for maybe a two or three yard gain. And you look up and he's gained eight yards. He slithers, you know. Short of a first down. It's third. Well, no, now they'll measure for it. Seven minutes to go in the third quarter. He's Two weeks from now, we will be covering the state championships for you. We will be announcing a little later on on TV3 when you'll be able to see those games. Of course, it's all dependent on who wins this week. First down picked up by Allen. We still have some regular season football coming your way on Thanksgiving Day as Bloomfield and Montclair square off at Foley Field in Bloomfield. You'll be able to see that game on TV3. The other half of our doubleheader, Union against Scotch Plains. First down and 10. Allen fakes the handoff to Fogg. Eludes a couple of tacklers, but was tripped up just enough by McFadden to prevent Allen from going in for the score. And you know, it looked to me like he was going to be stopped for a two-yard gain. Now look what happens. Watch how he breaks tackles. Here he breaks one right here. Here he breaks another right there. Gets another five yards. Second down and short, Allen 56 yards on the afternoon on nine carries. Here it's Fogg looking to go outside and he is in. Torrey Fogg from four yards out and it's now 27 to 10. Yeah, they're doing it. They're doing it the summit way. They're doing it on the ground. They're doing it with Fogg and they're doing it with, with their other good back, Jamie Allen. They're doing it with with their fullback, uh, they're doing it. They're getting it done. Eon Paxton's banging up inside for five and six yards. Extra point by Welsh is good. This is a big game for Paxton, you know. His dad is uh, one of the coaches on the summit team. Brother. Brother, older brother, right. Brad Pax, as we right. look at the scoring drive, following Fogg's interception, four plays, 22 yards, Summit now leading 28-10, and a noticeable sigh of relief has gone up from the Summit side. Oh, sure. Ball game at halftime, right now is an 18-point lead as they've scored the first two times they've touched the ball, but still a lot of time to go. This happens to be the third Paxton that's starred at the Summit. Brad was the quarterback on those Willie Wilson-led teams. Right. Nice scrimmage that team against him. Here's Scheifler. Squeezes through a couple of tacklers and gets up across the 30-yard line. Well, Hackettstown's going to have to generate some offense now. 28-10. Again, they'll have the wind at their backs in the fourth quarter, but they'd like to get something going here and, and narrow this 18-point deficit. Joe Romanchik on the sideline, looking on, first-year head coach. You know, when you speak to Jim Benedict before the game, one of the things he indicated was the fact that they had to stop Pat McFadden if they are going to win the game. McFadden dancing for out sure, of the pocket. That's what they got to do. And McFadden, a short pickup. And when you spoke to Joe Romanchik, why one of the things he felt like he had to do was he had to stop Torrey Fogg, and he certainly has not been successful in that area, and it certainly has not been his fault. Carl DeMuth making the stop on the play. 5-10 to go in the third quarter. We'll take a look at it one more time. McFadden with the happy feet and dancing out of some trouble. Quick athlete. Yeah, but the pursuit is so good, you know. There's always somebody coming, you know. Nobody, nobody's sitting down there watching him run. Everybody's after him. Somebody will get up to him. McFadden looks to throw, goes sideline. Complete, just short of the first down. Scheifler on the far sideline, hauling in the pass. It'll be third down, a little more than a yard to go. Making a yard against his summit defense if you're going to stay on the ground is not an easy job. Particularly with Hackettstown not having a, a very strong running game. 
Well, let's see what they do here. Kosher and Smith behind McFadden on third and short. McFadden rolling out, goes back across the grain for DeLillo in and out of his hands, and it's incomplete. And he had DeLillo, he had him there. He had him right over the middle. Once again, a time pattern, the ball's up in the air, DeLillo was there, and it goes through his hands. Just couldn't haul it in. Yep. Fourth and short. Let's see what they do here. Remember last time, there's a lot of motion on a punt attempt by Hackettstown trying to draw Summit offside. That was one. They drew him offside on a second. Won't work this time as McFadden goes back to punt. No, they snap it to the blocking back, Kosher. And Kosher is brought down for a loss on the play, and Summit will take over. Carl DeMuth snuffed that one out. Good thinking, good thinking by Hackettstown. You know, they're gonna move around a little bit, see if they can get him to go off. If they didn't get him off, to go off, short pass to the blocking back. He's gonna pick up the yard or two, whatever it was they needed, didn't work out. The best laid plans off to go astray. And with 4.09 to go, Summit has great field position here in the third quarter, leading 28 to 10. And another touchdown might put this game out of reach. Schroeder in at quarterback, he's got a great arm, fires wide open for Jamie Allen, touchdown, 39 yards on the pass from the sophomore, Steve Schroeder, throwing his second touchdown pass of the year, completing his 11th pass in 20 tries, and Bill, you were very impressed with this young man at practice on Thursday. I saw him throw the ball about four times on Thursday. I came back and I said, that's a quarterback, you know, and he can throw the ball. I don't know if he can run with the ball. I don't know if he's going to be a single wing uh, tailback, but uh, he certainly can fire the ball. He had everything that it takes, and he proved it. Well, Sean, for the extra point, Schroeder puts the snap down, and the kick is good. And it's now 35 to 10, as the Hilltoppers have scored the first three times they've touched the ball here in the second half. And with 3.46 to go in the third quarter, a long way back for this Hackettstown team. One of the problems when you're defensing Summit is that you gotta get a lot of people up by the line of scrimmage. When they run, they, they run hard. They run with a lot of lead blockers. Mentioned earlier that Schroeder's dad, Steve Sr., has the school record for touchdown passes thrown. Set it in 1970 when he threw 17 touchdown passes. He was named MVP of the team that year. Steve's uncle, his dad's brother, Skip, was the MVP of the 1969 team, so the Schroeder family very familiar in Summit Hilltopper Athletics. And uh, the sophomore comes in and fires the 39-yard pass to Allen. In the lead now 35 to 10. He is listed, by the way, as the tailback, as a backup tailback. He may be a very good runner. I don't know. It may fit in very well. A single win. In any case, when I saw him, what flashed across my mind was a young quarterback that I coached that you may remember, old-timers will, Gary Quazzo, who spent 10 years in the pros. Now, you know, I don't know if that's what Schroeder wants, but uh, he's got a good start. Only a sophomore as McFadden goes to the air, completes the short pass out across the 35-yard line to Scheifer. And it has been established at this point in the third quarter with three minutes to go that Hackettstown must throw if they're gonna be successful. They cannot run against this very strong, very physical, very mobile Summit defense. It's not something they've been able to do all year and uh, they continue to have their running woes. McFadden on second down, good coverage by the secondary. He rolls out, now tries to dance away from pressure and is brought back, or brought down, back by the original line of scrimmage. It'll be third and 10. I saw five people in the deep zones, and that's hard to throw deep with that many people playing in the deep zones. 
as Jared Paraskad. He and Nick Curiel, one of the differences uh, on this Summit team from last year, again, Summit ran the single wing last year, but defensively, they've got big guys to anchor interior defense at the tackle spot. Paraskan 267, Curiel 240. That's not something they had last year. Tyrone Ellis gets to McFadden. Tyrone Ellis has got excellent speed. We spoke of the speed that McFadden had, and, and Tyrone Ellis ran right with him, dragged him down, couldn't turn the corner. Could Fifth not turn the corner. Sack of the afternoon for the Hilltoppers. Ball came free and rolled out of bounds. So the clock stops with 152. Jim Benedict happy with the way things have gone. McFadden back to punt. The Hilltopper should get good field position out of this. It goes off the side of McFadden's foot. And let's see where they'll mark it out. They will mark it out at the 41-yard line. Now some heads being held uh, down low now by the Hackettstown Tigers. Well, they gave it a good shot. It looked like they were coming back in the second period. They were successful throwing the ball. And and then all heck broke loose in the third period. Summit woke up, you know. Like I say, they had that early success, and I guess they figured things were going to be very easy for them. Things weren't easy for them. Here's Paxson right up the middle. And now we're starting to see this much bigger Summit Hilltopper team starting to wear down a smaller Hackettstown club. Tough position for the Tigers. They're down big on the scoreboard. They are now starting to be physically beat up, and emotionally, it's got to be tough. Well, I know that uh, they're not going to win this ball game. Let's face it. They still have their pride. They they worked hard getting here. Allen dancing through the linebackers uh, to the secondary, picks up the first down to the 27-yard line. 104 to go. Clock stops momentarily as they move the chains. In just a few moments, we will be hearing from Don Soma, the Irvington football coach. Irvington and Summit will meet on Thanksgiving Day here at Tadlock Field, an 11 o'clock start. Irvington 6-1-1, one one, but not invited, not qualifying for the state playoffs. Here's Schroeder back in the game, looking to throw. Lofts one, looking for Allen again. And it's just a tad long. McFadden on the coverage. But Schroeder airing that ball out, Bill. Well, if his fellow wasn't going to catch the ball, then no one was going to catch the ball. That was a well-thrown ball. Here are some interesting statistics, man. Now, the offensive line from Hackettstown is 175. Average is 175. The defensive line from Summit is about 29, 210. That tells a little bit of the story, you know. The defensive line from Hackettstown is about 190. The offensive line from Summit about 213, 215. So that tells another part of the story. Schroeder comes to the bench. Here's Paxson. Paxson diving forward to the 20 yard line. Ryan Scheifler on the stop. Half minute remaining here in the third quarter. Might get one more play in. You know, when I had small teams, I used to have a big sign in the locker room, and the sign would read, you know, it's not the size of the dog in the fight, but the fight in the size of the dog, you know. But if your dog's in a fight, I think you're better off if he's a big dog. <laughs> there, there's no doubt about that. A third down, Fogg has the first down, and Tory Fogg gets inside the 15-yard line on the final play of the third quarter. So Summit, scoring the first three times they touch the ball in the third quarter, have extended a 14-10 lead at the halftime to 35-10 after three. 12 minutes remaining. We'll be back to Tatlock Field after this. Exercise is good for your heart. If you're planning a vigorous exercise program and you're at high risk for heart disease, your doctor might suggest a stress test. 
This might uncover heart disease or it may reassure you about cardiac fitness. The stress test determines if your cardiac response to exercise is normal. The test is also used to measure cardiac symptoms such as chest pain, dizziness, and shortness of breath. A stress test is performed in the doctor's office on a treadmill or stationary bicycle. It takes 10 to 20 minutes. The test is a graded workout of three minute stages beginning with a low level exercise and working up to a predicted maximum level based upon age. Risks of the test are small compared with a hazard of undetected heart disease. Once your doctor finds your heart fit for an exercise program, choose one that suits you and enjoy it. We're back at Tatlock Field in Summit, 35-10 Hackettstown. Steve Tober, and I'm joined by Don Soma, the Irvington head coach. And Don, you have to be pretty impressed with what you see from the Summit Hilltoppers, who you play on Thanksgiving Day. Well, Summit's a very well-coached football team. Jimmy Bennett does an excellent job. Uh, they have a lot of very good players at the skill position, so it's a fine football team. Now, you coach at North Hunterdon, so you know the Hackettstown program a little bit, too. Yeah, I was in uh, North Hunter in the 70s, and Hackenstown has a great reputation and a, a real fine tradition. They're a very well-coached football team also. Now, getting set for this summit team, and you've had a terrific season, 6-1-1. One one. You beat Union. You're not in the state playoffs. It must be a little disappointing or, or very disappointing. Well, I think the thing with the state playoffs, I think they really have to look at the, uh, the system. Uh, Lou Rettino and Frank Sicarell years ago uh, come up with a real good program, and and I think the state has to really look uh, uh, at it uh, for the future. Well, Don, I want to wish you good luck on Thanksgiving Thank Day. A great season. Time. Irvington at Summit Thanksgiving Day today. Don Soma watching the Summit Hilltop. Thank you very much. Back upstairs. All right, Steve, thank you very much. John Cummins almost went all the way with that ball. He, he saw daylight before he had full possession. Second down and 10. Paxson trying the middle, which has been successful all day for the Summit Hilltoppers. That system, by the way, going back uh, to Don Soma's comment, that system that he was referring to, basically uh, what was proposed is that all of the group fours in section two, this would be true throughout the state, but we'll use section two as an example. All the group fours would play each other or in two divisions and you'd be able to decide actually who was the best team during the regular season and then play off the teams for a state championship afterward. Same thing would be in group three, group two, and group one, instead of now having it split up where sometimes you play smaller schools, sometimes you play bigger schools. Here's Fogg, touchdown. Nine yard touchdown run for Tory Fogg, who's having himself an afternoon. One of the things that you cannot do against a single wing, I'm convinced, you know, Everybody has their own system of how they'd stop the single wing, and, and I'm no exception. I, uh, I believe that I have the, uh, the system to stop the single wing. <laughs> My system would involve getting some penetration. You, you can't scrape along the line, you know, and expect to stop the single wing. You gotta be there when it starts, especially when you're got backs like J.B. Allen and Tory Fogg and, and Paxton, you know. You gotta get in there secondary. You gotta break up the flow. You gotta get in there between the pulling tackle and the, and the fullback if he's leading the play and, and the other tackle if he's in front of the play. You gotta penetrate. You gotta break up the timing before it starts. Well, that's one thing that Hackettstown has been unable to do. Tory Fogg, 91 yards this afternoon, four touchdowns. Summit leading by a score of 42 to 10, and they are on their way to the North 2 Group 2 Championship, where they will take on the winner of the Mendham-Jefferson game. Should it be Mendham? And Mendham was winning 14 to nothing at the half. It would set up uh, an excellent matchup. Both teams undefeated. Uh, however, Thanksgiving might uh, change that a little bit. Irvington will be a stern test for this Summit club. Didn't Irvington beat Summit last year before they went into the... I think they did. I think they did. On Thanksgiving. Yep. Yeah, one of the three losses for Summit last year. Incidentally, a better way to stop the single wing. Figured it out. Had bigger, stronger, faster people. That works out usually, <laughs> Coach. 11, better athletes. 11.03 here. Joe Romanchik, though, has to dance with who he has and That's right. who has done well for him all year long at 6-1-2 and two through the regular season, co-champions in the Raritan division of the Skyland Conference. You know, Don Soma talked about the uh, history, the tradition at Hackettstown High School. 
They have won 17 state championships as we look at this scoring by quarters. They have won 17 state championships in their history. Summit has won eight. Kind of shows you uh, where the Hackettstown program is. Their last championship for Hackettstown back in 1981 when they defeated Dayton by a score of seven to six. Summit's last championship came back in 1988 when they beat Dover in overtime in a thrilling game. You talk about the championships that Hackettstown has won. Now, you're referring, obviously, to some of those mythical championships. Yeah, I mean, uh, the only one they won on the field since the playoff system was instituted was in 1981. This is their sixth playoff appearance. But you have to go back uh, to 1981 when they won their last one. But, yeah, there, there used to be, though, a championship awarded each year in each section. And they have won 17 altogether, 16 actually awarded. One they won on the field as Bob Bickle comes up with a sack, sixth of the afternoon for the Hilltoppers. They were called the Sailor Rated Championships. He was a gentleman that, for the newspaper, determined, you know, by his own mathematics, uh, who was a better team. They didn't do it on the field. They did it with right. paper and pencil. Bob Bickle credited with his second sack, third down. And long, third and 10, 9.35 and counting left in this ball game. Summit comfortably on top. McFadden sacked from behind, Bickle again. He's a hitter, isn't he? Bickle, the uh, heart and soul of that defense. They say he's the strongest kid on the team. Not a big kid, 5'9", 185. Yeah, yeah he, he come in hard, he come in hard, he come in ready to hit somebody. He's quick off the ball. They got a lot of players on that Summit team. By players, I mean just that, you know. People that, that hit, that play the game the way the game's supposed to be played. Good punt by McFadden, sends Fogg back. Continues to backpedal. Hoping to get a block, slips and falls as he tries to cut inside Colin Scheifler. Fogg has returned three punts for scores this year. He averages somewhere around 19, 20 yards per return on kickoffs. That's why they've been getting those short kickoffs, incidentally. Hilltoppers comfortably on top. Fogg looking to go over 100 yards on the afternoon. He's got 91 at this point. Here's Allen, and Allen's got room up the middle, up near the 40-yard line for a first down. I think that Fogg needs about 139, 140 yards, and he'll be over 1,000 yards for the season. Oh, he had 863 coming in as we look at the replay. Add the 91. That's 954. So he needs 46 yards if I arithmetic's right. And he'll have two games to do it because they've got a regular season game and they've got the state final. And that 46 total is reduced here as Fogg continues to dance along the sideline, reminiscent of the great run we saw in the Rawway game right before halftime where he was stopped, seemingly stopped, three or four times, continued to keep his feet going, the team continued to maintain blocks, and Fogg scored a touchdown that gave Summit a lead at halftime. It was just a brilliant individual effort. Paul Spahala was on the call that game, said the finest game he has seen, or finest run he has seen on TV3. First it sure ten. make people miss, can Oops. Paxson, nine yard pickup. If you're keying, if you're keying, Tory Fogg, and, and he sweeps, you know, and you go, and you're an inside linebacker, and you go with Fogg, and Paxton winds up with the ball. There's no linebacker there, you know. He's eight yards before he gets hit. Paxton, 75 yards this afternoon. Fogg over 100 yards, four touchdowns for Fogg. Allen with a touchdown. Schroeder a pass to Allen for a score. Here's Fogg. Breaking it outside, cuts it back in, has the first down and more as he's inside the 15-yard line, and he might go over the 1,000 before we're done this afternoon. Yep, that's very possible. It's all according to how long, how long he stays in the football game. He did 127 yards coming in. Needs six more, we're now told, following this run down to the 
14-yard line. Well, he's going to have another ball game to do it, and if he doesn't do it, two more, no, one more game. Irving, two more games, right? And the state playoff right. championship. Here's Paxson. Paxson looking to get in the end zone. Great tackles. And Ian Paxson from 14 yards out gets on the board. Well, that, that defensive line for Hackettstown is kind of beat up at this point. They've been pounded and pounded and pounded, you know, and they haven't got very much to, to show for their effort. They stayed in the ball game that whole first half. They just didn't have the size, didn't have the resilience, but they gave it everything they have. 6.23 to go in the game. And they're certainly be to, to be congratulated for a good year. Well, sh good on the extra point. It's now 49 to 10. You're absolutely right there, Bill, and, and I know it's of little consolation to these men as we look at Paxson's touchdown run because everyone sets a state championship as a goal. Very few get a chance to participate in the playoffs, only four teams in North 2, Group 2. This Hackettstown team will end the year at 6-2-2, two and two, and that's a record that uh, very few thought they would be able to attain, thought that maybe two wins would be what could be expected from this club. So the hurt will last for a while. But uh, when uh, time heals those wounds, they'll be able to reflect on a real fine season. Right. Year in which they won a conference championship and made it to the state playoffs. And they've had some good wins, and no one ever thought they'd get this far. Be a highly regarded uh, Bridgewater team two weeks ago to have her birth in the playoffs. A lot of good coaching, a lot of hard work, a lot of good people. Hosier with his first kick return, and he's driven out of bounds at the 25-yard line. 6-12 remaining in this game. We invite you to stay with us, because following the conclusion of today's contest, we will speak with the captains. We'll speak with the captains of the team, Bob Bickle and Ian Paxson. Season comes to an end for Hackettstown. Those who play a winter sport will get ready. In just another week, they'll be practicing for the start of the winter campaign. A lot of those boys are going to be out on a wrestling team. I noticed that in their write-ups. A lot of them are wrestlers. Cummins drops the ball. Looks like they were setting up a little hook and ladder on the far side. Scheifler was the trailing receiver. Perhaps Cummins was trying to release it before he held it. Let's take a look at it. I think they're setting up the hook and ladder here, Bill. He was flipping it before he could. Well, maybe we'll get a chance to see it. Here we go. Yep, he's ready to flip it. He didn't catch it yet. Second down and 10, 6.07 to go in the contest. Twins out to the left. Shotgun formation. McFadden wants to run. And slips and falls to the turf at the 30-yard line. You know how you know this game is over? I mean, besides the fact that the scoreboard reflects that. When the coaches come down from the press box up top, right. and they take the headsets off, then you know they feel comfortable uh, that the game has been won. That, that's always the sure sign. Coaches being, uh, at, at times, uh, pessimistic, uh, never knowing what might happen. You can't be sure, give up, and uh, you never know what's gonna happen. A uh, team comes back in, but when they leave the press box, that means they're pretty comfortable with those ones in the back pocket, and it is. As DeLillo is wrapped up short of a first down, it'll be fourth down in about, well, let's see, now they mark this forward progress across the 35-yard line, so it'll be a first down. You know, you have to note the fact that there have been so few penalties this game. You know, I bet there haven't been more than three penalties all game. I remember uh, one team going offside, uh, one team moving a little too quick. Those are the only two things that I remember. There may have been another one. I think that's no it. No 15 two. yarders. No. Total of 10 yards penalized. That speaks well for the coaches. And a well played, hard hitting game. Been no holding back. and. Been no poor sports. It's 
It's high school football at its best. Kevin Batty looking to get the first down on first down. Stop just short, nine yard pickup. 4.40 to go in this contest. Thanksgiving Day features a doubleheader on TV3. Montclair in Bloomfield at Foley Field in Bloomfield. A matchup of traditional rivals. And you'll also be able to see on Thanksgiving a watch on conference matchup between the Union Farmers and the Scotch Plains Raiders. And then two weeks from today, you'll be tuning into TV3, we hope, for coverage of state championship action. Which games we'll cover, dependent upon what happens this afternoon. Summit will be home, obviously, after this win. They'll take on either Mendham or Jefferson. And you'll send me the films of that, those games, won't you? Those yes, as, sure. as you enjoy a, a refreshment, an adult beverage in the warmth of the Florida sunshine. I thank you. You'll be spending just a few more days uh, in the Northeast, your family coming in for Thanksgiving, Coach. I saw that, yes, I saw that, those snowdrops. You know, I got frightened, I began to tremble. <laughs> you'll be like an old family friend uh, who does the same, heads to Florida each winter and calls up on a regular basis as spring nears. And is it still cold? Yes. Okay, I'll call you in a week. Is it getting warmer? It's getting a little warmer. Still a little too cold? Yeah, all right, I'll spend some more time in Florida. Finally, when he gets the report that it's warm, he says, all right, I'll be back. Up. McFadden picks up the first down to the 45-yard line of the Hilltoppers. I wait for the first track. Okay, that's, that'll work. He's a good competitor, that McFadden is. You know, the game's pretty much out of the wood. I'm sure any thinking person recognizes that with three and a half minutes to go, but they're up there, they're lining up, they're still trying to score. McFadden scoring the only touchdown for the Tigers today. Flips one out for Cummins. Cummins finally brought down inside the 40-yard line. Did not get out of bounds, so the clock continues to run. McFadden, by the way, is the nephew of Westfield softball coach Maggie McFadden. Well, that's a team with a lot of character. I tip my hat to them, you know. They don't pack it in. They're not crawling away. They're, they're leaving with their heads up, I'm sure. They're playing hard right down to the end. Three minutes left in this contest. They're trying to score. Tory Fogg over 100 yards on the afternoon. 121 to be exact. Here's McFadden completing it to Scheifler and Ryan Scheifler is going to go in. Isn't that a, a pretty pass? Eight yard touchdown pass from McFadden to Scheifler. And he put that up in the air before Scheifler turned. Did you notice that? That ball was up in the air. We'll see it again. There's a ball up in the air. Now he turns, and there's a football right where he expected it. He breaks a few tackles and goes in to score. You could almost say, say they deserve that one. McFadden's fifth catch, or rather Scheifler's fifth catch of the afternoon. <laughs> The extra point by Butts is good, and with 2.43 to play in the ball game, it's now 49 to 17. Well, how many teams this year have scored more than 17 points against Summit? Team? Well, the only team is Plainfield in the season opener when they scored 25. Is that right? We've seen just about all of the uh, Summit defense on defense. I haven't seen too many fresh jerseys in yet. I see some in now on the kickoff return team. I see a lot of clean jerseys. Cummins to kick off. Fogg and Allen are back deep to receive it. Line drive kick handled by Paxson. Ian Paxson returning it right up the middle, up to midfield. He doesn't know any way to go but straight ahead, does he? <laughs> he just goes straight ahead. He doesn't care who's in his way. He's going straight ahead. He's such a, a different kind of runner than the that Tory Fogg and Jamie Allen. He looks like he's looking to run into people. Fresh faces on offense for Summit. 
Here's your tailback. Mr. Schroeder, Steve Schroeder. Let's see if he runs with the football. Now the ball is snapped instead to Golden. He's that up man that caught that uh, that short kickoff. Now Golden comes out. Ryan Sapp was in there for a play. Fresh backs uh, in the backfield. Well, he doesn't want to hurt anybody. He knows it. Jeff Lovell has come on. Juan Fushi has checked in. Jimmy Benedict's mature enough to not to want to hurt anybody, his team or the other team. Schroeder is going to go to the air, and it is picked off by Cummins. Cummins picks off the pass and brings it to the 48-yard line for Cummins, his fifth interception of the year. And uh, in all likelihood, with just 1.31 to go, that'll give him enough to hold on to the team lead. McFadden had four coming into the game. I don't know that Summit will get the ball back. One of the things that Schroeder has to learn, and you know he's only a sophomore, is that he's got to look away his receiver, you know. He's staring down his receiver. He's bringing everybody's eyes toward the ball and toward his receiver. He's got to look away at least once. Summit with the fresh faces now on the defense. A lot of clean jerseys. Here's Batty for a first down. Inside the 40-yard line, 106 to play in the contest. Clock will stop as they move the chains. And now we have a full timeout that's going to be taken by Hackettstown. McFadden is thrown for over 200 yards this afternoon but it is in vain a losing effort. Part of the problem was the running game just wasn't working. It hasn't really worked that well all year for Hackettstown, and it didn't work this afternoon, and they were forced to pass. They had an effective second quarter when they rallied from a 14-0 deficit to bring it to 14-10 at the half, but the third quarter was all summit. They scored the three times they had it to lead 35-10 after three. And tacked on two more scores here in the fourth quarter. It surprised me that they were as successful as they were throwing the ball in view of the fact that they could not run it at all. That running game just could never get started. Those, that defensive line from Summit's too aggressive, too tough. McFadden steps up, throws long, and it is intercepted. Jose Valentin with the interception. Scheifler was the intended receiver, and Valentin picks it off at the five. And with 56 seconds remaining, the Hilltoppers will take over. Again, they'll be back home for the last two games of the season. Thursday on Thanksgiving at 11 o'clock, they'll host the Blue Knights of Irvington High School in the conclusion of the regular season, as they'll look to go 10-0 against Irvington. And two weeks from today, they'll be back here at Tatlock Field to square off against the winner of the Mendham-Jefferson game. And Jim Benedict doesn't <laughs> mind that the season rolls on and continues. Fushi picks up a first down as he gets across the 15-yard line. Well, Bill, it has been a pleasure working with you this season. We yes, I've enjoyed it. wish you the best on, uh, and a safe trip down Thank to you. Florida. Enjoy Thanksgiving at home with the family and then a safe trip down to the Sunshine State. Stay warm. That's why I go. Should be the last play of the small game as Golden tries to go around the left side, gets across the 20-yard line, eight seconds left. Mark the ball ready to play. Well, we have a penalty flag. That's the delay here. We have a clip against Summit, so uh, that will negate the run. And one more play will have to be run off. Long ride back for the Hackettstown supporters. But like you indicated, they have nothing to be ashamed of. They gave it everything they had. Just wasn't enough. That's a good Summit team they ran into. They ran into a, a buzzsaw. Now 9-0 on the season, 17-3 since they have employed the single wing.
clock begins to run. We may not even get this playoff. Three seconds left. The snap to Schroeder, the handoff to Jamal Stewart, and Stewart wrestled down as the gun sounds in the distance and the Summit Hilltoppers move to 9-0 on the season. They advance to the state championship for the second year in a row. They await the winner of the Mendham-Jefferson game. They've got a regular season game against Irvington. Still play on Thursday at 11 o'clock. The coaches meet at the center of the field and uh, the season ends for the Hackettstown Tigers. But nonetheless, a fine year as they end it at 6-2-2. Two, two. Summit moving on at 9-0. Oh. Torrey Fogg, four touchdowns this afternoon. We're going to take a short break here. We're going to come back and wrap things up. We invite you to stay for our post-game show. The final once again from Tatlock Field. Summit 49, Hackettstown 17. Quite an afternoon for you, young Tory. Four touchdowns, 131 yards rushing. You got to be happy with your performance. Uh huh. Thank you. It was good blocking that provided me to run through the holes, and you know, with good blocking, I can get the yards. So I thank the line and everybody for doing good blocking. The seen that interception by you, which set up the fourth touchdown to make it 28-10, might have been a big play in the game. You caught it, returned it 17 yards from the 39 to the 22. A big play there. Uh huh. Well, I thought he was going to run. I was just coming up, then he just threw it to me. I didn't know what he was doing, so I just caught it, you know, tried to run it back for a touchdown, but didn't make it. Torrey, 23 touchdowns on the season. You're six yards th short of 1,000, and good luck the rest of the way. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bob Bickle, the tight end linebacker, one of the captains. And, Bob, you're one of the unsung players. You do a great job blocking. That offensive line really seemed to do the job in the second half especially. Yeah, um, they were giving us some trouble at, towards the end of the first quarter. Um, we made a little adjustments, and uh, we came out and just took it to them, tried to overpower them, and that's what happened. Of course, you don't get a chance to catch that many passes. You do a lot of great blocking defensively, a linebacker. The blocking job, it's an unselfish position, and you have to do it, but you must love the block out there. Yeah, I mean, uh, whatever I can do to help the team spring somebody to run, I'll do it. Uh, if I can catch a pass every now and again, that's fine too, but uh, I just do what they tell me to do, and hopefully this team will win. Well, good luck on Thanksgiving in December 4th, Thank Bob you. Bickle. Ian Paxson. Another captain for the Summit Hilltoppers, linebacker, fullback, and Ian, you had a chance to score a touchdown in the fourth quarter. Another solid two-way job for you this afternoon. Yeah, we, uh, the play that I scored on, the play was there all day, and um, uh, I just got the ball, and I decided I was going to score, and I did. Now, looking at this team, you had a little bit of a tough time in the first half with Hackestown came back, but then you had the big rush in the third quarter, took the big lead, and then rolled away. Yeah, at halftime, you know, we kind of lost a little momentum there right at the end of the first, first uh, half. But we came back um, in the third quarter and really exploded, and I think we played really well. Now, you've been there a couple of years ago. You lose to Caldwell in the semifinals. You lose to Dover last year. You've been there the whole way. How is this team different? Um, well, I think we, we've, uh, we've come together nicely. We started out our sophomore year, and uh, we got a little of playoff experience. And then last year, we, we uh, won the Jefferson game, and then we lost to Dover. And this year, our mission is to go 11-0 state champs and win on December 4th. Well, we've heard that Mendham has won today over Jefferson, so good luck against Mendham on December 4th and, of course, on Thanksgiving against yep. Irvington. Thank you very much. Congratulations. Right. Jim Benedict. Steve. Great job for you guys this Thank afternoon. You. Tremendous you. job improving to 9-0. and And I guess the second half, of course, that win was a big factor, but you really came out like gangbusters after that locker room halftime talk. Yeah, we did. Well, I think we came out like gangbusters in the first half, too, and moved the ball consistently down the field, scored our two touchdowns. Then they... Uh, you know, the quarter changed, and they opened up their offense more because they were going with the win. McFadden did a great job of scrambling and throwing passes, and we were a little undisciplined in our pass drops. And that's all we talked about at halftime was just, you know, maintaining our poise, get a little better pass drop, and play a little bit better defense and, and may get control of the ball in the third quarter and, and just drive down the field. The kids did a great job of it. Of course, McFadden with those pop passes, giving them a, a good burst in the second quarter. But you come out, the big interception, I thought by Fogg, really turned things around. 21-10, you drive and make a 28-10. That would seem to be a big play. Well, I'm sure McFadden definitely believed in himself in the second quarter, and, the, and their team believed in him and, the, and what they were doing offensively, and they were doing a great job. But you know, then when you throw an interception, you start to say, mm, you know, maybe we're making a few mistakes here, and, you know, and, and things just weren't going their way. And then you know, just taking the ball and controlling it, going right down the field on them uh, a couple times, and then hitting the big touchdown pass that we hit to change things up a little bit. We really took control in the third quarter. 
And of course, you lost to Dover last year in the finals. Is this the club that you've really been waiting for, possibly at Summit, to go all the way? You've, everything's all the blocks have been set now. Well, th this is a real good football team. I'm not going to say it's a club I've been waiting for because we enjoy every team that we we coach and and great. We've had some great efforts. Even you know, we have five and five made it into the playoffs one year and lost to Cole, and we still we're extremely proud of our kids. So, you know, you know, we're just we're concentrating on this year. That's about it. And the legend of the single wing keeps building up here in Summit. <laughs> well, it's it's been fun, and it definitely gives our program a, a a moniker. You know, people people know when they think of Summit, they th they think of the single wing, and it's it's been a lot of fun. Jim, good luck on December fourth against you. Mendham, and of course Thanksgiving against Irvington. Yeah, thank you very much. We're going to need all we have to play both of their both excellent teams. Good luck thank the you. rest of the way. The Summit Hilltoppers improved the nine and zero as they come away with a forty nine to seventeen victory over Hackettstown. We're going to be back with some final comments from Matt and Bill right after this short timeout.